request to all of you kindly join us for two minute silence in the memory of pride of india lata mangeshkar ji and rajkumar sir father and we pray to the almighty to grant peace to the departed soul and the courage and strength to the family om shanti thank you everyone myself dr arpita singh regional head of mscs gorakhpur branch would like to welcome all our delegates of this evening very welcome you to all now i'd like to invite dr kapil garg sir president ita northwest delhi branch for welcoming note of our chief guest and all the delegates dr kapil garg sir good evening everyone on behalf of id northwest delhi branch and max dental skin a very well welcome a warm welcome to a, uh, everyone and our welcome to our chief guest dr upasna sethi who is a renowned uh, as head of the department in its dental college and dr nitin anand krishna and our mentor and highly skilled clinician and a great teacher dr udit gupta uh, whom i know since a long time is like a younger brother to me and special thanks to all the members uh, our new members as well as the old members those who are associated with us since our beginning and the new members to the session i am sure you will have a great session this evening over to you thank you thank you sir as sir said we have very elegant chief guest with us dr upasna sethi ma'am professor head of department in omr its dental college i request to you ma'am that please say some words for today's session uh, good evening everyone uh, at the outset i am extremely thankful to uh, max dental skills and uh, uh, dr kapil gar uh, for uh, uh, having me here and i am very grateful to all of you that you gave me an opportunity to witness such a wonderful uh, lecture and uh, and and the topic which is actually the need of the hour that is about the dental photography and uh, as we all know that uh, today in the era of uh, medico legal cases and the patient being so much aware about the dental treatment patient exposed to internet and all those things so in such cases uh, documentation uh, is of par uh, in, in in fact par importance to all of us and uh, i am sure uh, dr udit gupta who is a master in this subject uh, will enlighten and the entire gathering about this very relevant topic uh, to all of us thank you thank you ma'am for your uh, wonderful words now i request to uh, our chairperson of today's session dr nitin nitin anand krishnan sir dental oncologist in amrita hospital kopi sir please say some words to us and give blessing to us dr nitin anand krishnan yes, sir yes please yes 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 please yeah good evening good, good evening to one and all and it's once again a great privilege for me to join the session on the second day on this photography session and especially uh, it's it's an it's a humble feeling uh, to join the session along with uh, dr Ud udit gupta and dr basana and dr kapil gag also and one, and i once again i thank all the members of the group for the of the max skill the the committee members and everybody for having taken this 
to a different level to reach all extents because as uh, dr upasana ma'am said it is very true that we don't document what we do which is uh, which is of prime importance so i think we should give importance because ma'am uh, she well uh, told about uh, the, like uh, medical legal case and other things so we need to document everything that is one important factor and uh, i look 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 forward uh, to hear the talk thank you so much for welcoming me thank you sir now it's time to invite our outstanding mentor of this evening dr udit gupta sir a small introduction about sir is sir has done his uh, mds in uh, conservative dentistry and endodontics during course of his post graduation he was awarded the most prestigious famdent award in the category of best post graduate student of the year in 2015 he also awarded with indian health professional award in year 2017 under the category excellence in conservative dentistry and endodontics he has various numbers of scientific publications to his uh, to his credit his main interest is in single visit rotary endodontics endodontic surgeries management of trauma cases regenerative endodontics biometric composite restoration dental and wildlife photography So welcome you, sir. Sir, please uh, carry on the session, please. Thank you for a very nice introduction. So let's begin with today's topic. As you all know, the topic for today is the dental aesthetic photography, and I will be covering you know the general photography, the basics of general photography that will help you in daily basis, like starting with the documentation and improving your own work. so a topic that i will be discussing a why photography is important what is a dslr which camera and lens we should buy and we should have because this is you know very confusing thing uh, most people think that we can do photography by mobile but it's not advised to do any kind of like you know the dental or any outdoor photography with the help of mobile uh, for photography dental photography there are special equipments the basic dslr or the lenses and for that we require few kind of lens a uh, few kind of flashes so i will be also discussing the importance of flashes and what kind of flashes do we need and then coming to the exposure triangle so the exposure triangle is something very uh, uh, basic about photography that we all should know before starting with the photography and then the basic camera settings for intraoral and extraoral photography complete protocol for intraoral photography aesthetic photography and some portrait photography coming to why photography is important as a dentist first of all as the ma'am said and uh, we all know today people are very aware about you know all the procedure when they are coming to a dental clinic they google it google they google everything about it like the procedure uh, what kind of procedure it is how many settings are there so people are becoming very aware so today just one mistake and they can sue us so we should have records what we all have done uh, in a clinical practice the next thing is to motivate the patient for example if a patient is coming to you and you say that you you need scaling in your teeth and they say डॉक्टर साहब इसमें मेरे दांत गंदे का अच्छे तो जस्ट टेक अ पिक्चर एंड शो हिम एंड जस्ट स्केल वन और टू टीथ नॉट मेनी टीथ एंड देन शो द डिफरेंस इन योर फोटो देन ही विल कम टू नो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस इन दैट केस यू कैन मोटिवेट द पेशेंट इफ देयर आर द पेशेंट लाइक यू हैव टू डू अ फुल माउथ रीहैब यू हैव टू कन्विंस द पेशेंट इफ यू विल हैव यू नो द प्रीवियस रिकॉर्ड्स ऑफ द फुल माउथ रीहैबिलिटेशन दैट यू हैव डन देन देन यू कैन शो दोस रिकॉर्ड्स टू योर पेशेंट टू मोटिवेट दैट पेशेंट अबाउट यू नो गेटिंग द ट्रीटमेंट again better documentation if you are clicking good pictures then definitely you can get uh, your uh, articles published in a very good journals that are like the international journals because there's few protocols that are needed then coming to the very most important topic that is the shade selection shade selection for anything like for composite restorations coming to the all ceramic restorations then the lab communication shade and texture mapping self assessment of our own work i will be discussing all these topics uh, <clears throat> uh, like the shade selection and the lab communication in detail but in all these points 
for me the two most important points are the medical legal uh, medical legal purpose and the last one self assessment of our own work whenever we see a work intra orally when we have for example we have done a composite restoration we cannot see flaws in it you know but as soon as you enter a macro world you take a you know shot with a dslr and a macro lens and you open it in on in uh, on your screen then definitely you see minimum uh, like the minor uh, minor flaws like porosities you know they are, they are, the line angles are not uh, properly finished or polished so it helps to improve your own work not only the composite but also surgical procedures also like placement of implants where you have placed the implant like when you take post operative picture it definitely help you so what is the full form of a dslr dslr is nothing but this is a normal dslr camera that we use in our day to day dentistry so the full form is digital single reflex camera why it is called a digital single reflex camera because it is a digital camera jo pehle chalte the wo film wale camera hote the isliye unko kabhi dslr nahi kaha jata tha isliye isko digital kaha jata hai because uh, it's a digital single lens and the single lens means only one lens this is the lens part only a single lens can be connected to this body this is the dslr body here and this is the lens so it is called as a digital single re lens reflex camera now coming to how dslr works so this is a bit confusing image for you but i will try to explain it in simple words for example your subject your subject is here standing here and your camera is here now what will happen a light rays will fall on your subject and that light is called as a incident light and that light will be reflected from your subject into the lens of your camera and this is the lens of your camera where my mouse is moving and as soon as this is the light now when the light will enter your lens then it will go through the lens into the body and there is a mirror mirror in your camera and it will reflect up and there is a prism and through which you can see the image in the viewfinder this is called as a viewfinder from where you see the image now what happens is when you click a button the shutter button like this i guess you can hear the sound can you hear the sound this is the shutter button now again listen to it this is a shutter button now this sound is basically this mirror goes up this mirror once you have seen you just click the shutter button this mirror will go up and this light instead of going this way it will directly go here this is called as a sensor that is the heart of a camera the light will enter into this sensor the shutter basically this is a shutter it will open and the light will uh, this is a mirror and here is a shutter the shutter will go up the light will enter into the sensor and the image will be formed i know it's a bit confusing but it's the basic principle we should know uh coming to the next topic which camera we should buy now this is a very debatable topic but if you are a beginner and you just want a camera for your dental photography nothing else like you can do also outdoor photography but you are not a professional and if you just you know want to stick to the dental photography i will recommend to get a crop sensor camera because going to a very hi fi camera can cost you in lakhs but a crop sensor camera can come under 30000 like 25000 or 30000 rupees so what is the difference between a full frame camera or a crop sensor camera nothing much just consider this image which which you are seeing in your screen this is a complete picture this is a complete scene so basically ek ek khidki hote it's like a window a full frame camera will have a bigger sensor usme badi window hogi jab aap apne view finder se dekhenge aapko zyada nazar aayega और जब आप अपने क्रॉप सेंसर से देखेंगे मेरे पास क्रॉप सेंसर कैमरा इस टाइम पे जब आप अपने क्रॉप सेंसर से देखेंगे सामने इमेज आपको वही इमेज छोटी नजर आएगी बेसिकली फुल फ्रेम हैव अ बिगर विंडो इन लेम एंड टर्म एंड क्रॉप सेंसर हैज अ स्मॉलर विंडो दो इट्स ऑब्वियस कॉमन सेंस अगर हम बड़ी खिड़की से देख रहे हैं हमें एक बड़ा व्यू नजर आ रहा है हम एक छोटी विंडो से देख रहे हैं हमें कम नजर आ रहा है नाउ साइंटिफिकली द साइज ऑफ दी सेंसर अ फुल फ्रेम सेंसर साइज the size here the width which we call as it is 36 mm 
and this is 24 mm so basically it is 36 by 24 mm the size of a full frame camera sensor is 36 by 24 mm and this is a entrance level question also in neat neat exams and the crop sensor the size of the crop sensor camera is basically this is 22 mm by 18 mm so this is the basic difference between a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera so in dentistry if you're going for a dentistry purpose only i will recommend you to go for a crop sensor camera only there's no need to get a full frame camera and crop sensor camera can do wonders also outdoor uh, in the outdoor photography also Now, which camera and lens should you buy? I, I would recommend you guys to take the screenshot of this so that once you go, you know, to the market, uh, you can purchase. All people who stay in Delhi, they can go to Chandni Chowk because you will get a best deal over there regarding the camera and the lenses. So uh, coming to the Nikon body, I'm just talking about the body only. So there's a D3500, D5300 or D5600. The cheapest one is the D5300 and a good one that you can get. And then in these camera D7200 or 7100 will little cost you a little bit like 40,000 or 45,000, but D5300 is approximately 25,000 in the Nikon. So you can get that. <clears throat> the second one is the Canon body and there's 1300D, 1500D and EOS 200D Mark II. But I'm not sure, I'm a Nikon user, so I'm not sure whether they are, you know, uh, these are 1300D or 1500D is available. 1300D, I guess it's, it's uh, it's not available, but you can get 1500D. But my main purpose here to tell you about the body is whenever you go to purchase a body of a camera, always remember that you have to purchase one thing. You have to see one thing regarding your camera body. It should have a hot shoe. What is a hot shoe? Can you see attachment over here? This, the silver part. This is called as a hot shoe. So what is the purpose of this hot shoe? You can attach your flash over here because in Canon, there are some cameras. They don't have a hot, uh, they don't have a center pin. Like I guess, if, uh, they, I, I don't remember exactly the model number, but yeah, there is a camera in which you don't have a center pin. Center pin, uh, so your, the, your, your manual flashes will not work over that camera. So you have to make sure before purchasing, you have to ask your, the camera person uh, uh, to uh, give you the flash and you have to test it over there because there are so many models it's very tough to you know discuss about each and every model so you have to uh, check that and always get a camera who uh, which has a inbuilt flash inbuilt flashes uh, one second inbuilt flashes this this is called as an inbuilt flash iska use kya hota hai when you go into advanced you know advanced photography then you can use it as a master flash to fire your other flashes wirelessly. That's definitely another topic. But yes, you will get a lot advantage. Always go for that camera only, which has a hot shoe in our which center pin, ho, and saath mein, we have an inbuilt flash. Or we call it as a pop-up flash. Then coming to the... Uh, sorry. Then coming to the lenses, definitely uh, if you're getting a Canon body, I will prefer you to get a Canon lens and Canon ke andar, dentistry ke andar ek lens use hota hai. that is a 100mm macro lens. Ab iske andar we will discuss <clears throat> aapko konsa lena aur konsa nahi lena. Then coming to the Nikon lens, there is one Nikon ke andar 100mm nahi aata. you have to get 105mm macro lens or 85mm macro lens. Now we will discuss about the lens. Coming on the lenses. Now this is a Nikon macro lens. Now here we have to read this lens. Okay. So it is written 105 mm. 105 mm is nothing. It's just the focal length. Then coming to the f2.8. This is 2.8. It means the aperture stop. G, G is when this is of no use. IF means the internal focusing. I will tell you what is internal focusing. Now, this is a third party lens. I'm not using a Nikon or a Canon lens. This is a third party lens and I'm using it since like, uh, I guess, eight or 10 years. It's a Sigma lens. 
now uh, the internal focusing system is basically when you focus the focusing will be inside of your you know the lens body ab main isme focus karna chahunga you can see it's extending aage piche ho raha hai aage body so it's basically it's external externally focusing <clears throat> externally focusing uh, uh, camera lens but canon ke andar ya nikon ke andar if you purchase their company lenses then definitely there is the lenses data internally focusing uske andar ye aise move nahi karta hai bilkul bhi uske andar andar hi andar mechanics hote hain jo jab bhi aap focusing karenge it will the elements will move inside only of the lens then coming to the vr it's written vr over here vr means the vibrate vibration reduction and it's uh, uh, really not required in dental photography because we are doing a flash photography here coming to the next slide now these are the canon lenses now you can see over here there is a lens this is a 100 mm macro lens there is a lens with a red ring and there is a lens with a golden ring i won't recommend you to uh, get this lens this uh, the red one because it is super expensive it it will cost you approximately 67 to 70000 in the market and this lens will cost you approximately 35 or 36000 फर्क क्या है दोनों लेंसेज के अंदर कुछ फर्क नहीं है सिर्फ एक ही फर्क है कि इसके अंदर आपको जो मैंने आपको निकॉन में बताया था जो गोल्डन रिंग वाला है इसके अंदर वाइब्रेशन रिडक्शन आपको नहीं मिलती है वाइब्रेशन रिडक्शन मतलब अगर आपके हाथ में कैमरा शेक होता है थोड़ा बहुत तो लेंस उसको एडजस्ट कर लेता है कैमरा शेक को ब्लरिंग नहीं आती है बट फ्लैश फोटोग्राफी हम लोग जब भी हिस्ट्री उसके अंदर जनरली वैसे भी शेक नहीं होता है क्योंकि हम इतनी हाई स्पीड पे करते हैं फ्लैश कैप्चर एवरी so this lens but yes if anyone want to go for a professional photography uh, like uh, kisi ko professional uh, invest karne ka shauk hai that i want to get the best one i i need a vibration reduction and in canon it's not vibration reduction it is is it is called as image stabilization so that person can get it definitely there is no harm for the vr uh, for the is image stabilization but yes uh if we have to invest in low budget then definitely you can get a normal 1500d canon and this lens and i would recommend only two cameras nikon canon and lenses you can have canon and nikon ka to uh, you can take a nikon lens because nikon ke andar we don't get a lens without vibration reduction so it will cost you like It, it's seventy five or eighty thousand. So <clears throat> definitely, I would recommend you to get a Canon camera in future if you are getting it. Coming to the next slide. Now, which external flash we should use? The first one that I told you was a pop up flash. The recently which one I showed you? This is the pop up flash. Just just. yes as a beginner you can use this flash but i won't recommend because definitely it's going to give you very harsh and you know very very sharp shadows it it gives you very sharp uh, it, the images are not very crisp and it can't you know go like if you are taking a full mouth shot like intra oral complete shot from the central to the molar this light you know cannot go till the last molar it won't expose the whole oral cavity so it's good as a beginner to learn but not when you have to post case or you are um, or publish a case then coming to the ring flash ring flash yes ring flash is the now uh, earlier i used to have the sigma em 140 dg i have worked with it for approximately 6 years but due to some technical issues um, i had to discard this flash but it worked amazingly uh till the time i used it but now i have shifted to one more flash that is a mike this is a <clears throat> mike flash if you can see this is a ring flash this is a mike ring flash now this is the main flash that i am using in my daily basis for full mouth uh, cases or any any surgical cases so you can get it and the model if you want to know you can note it it is mk14 mk14 ext so we will be i will be showing you few shots with this flash uh, there are pictures coming up now there are another flash which we call it but 
मेक श्योर दैट दिस फ्लैश ये जो फ्लैश है ये आपके मैक्सिमम मैक्सिमम केसेस में यही काम आएगी वेदर यू आर डूइंग एनी काइंड ऑफ सर्जिकल केस कॉम्पोजिट केस फुल माउथ केस एस्थेटिक केस एनी सर्जिकल एनी थिंग यू आर डूइंग इन फैक्ट पोर्ट्रेट फोटोग्राफी दिस फ्लैश इज मेन गो टू गो दिस यू शुड आर एंड ये फ्लैश की कॉस्ट अप्रोक्सीमेटली आई गेस फिफ्टी फाइव हंड्रेड से सिक्स थाउजेंड के करीब है यू कैन गेट इट फ्रॉम अली एक्सप्रेस एंड इट विल वर्क अमेजिंगली आई विल शो यू पिक्चर्स लोग कहते हैं गेट अ कैन फ्लैश गेट दिस फ्लैश दैट फ्लैश नो इट इट विल वर्क बिलीव मी कमिंग टू द स्पीड लाइट सॉरी कमिंग टू द ट्विन फ्लैश दिस इज अ निकॉन आर वन सी वन फ्लैश ट्विन फ्लैश दिस इज प्राइमरली यूज फॉर एस्थेटिक केसेज ओनली when we have to do like composite or the all ceramic uh, we are doing on the interior six in that cases uh, you can invest invest in it if you have a nikon camera but again it's a very expensive thing so i won't recommend you if you are using the canon uh, if you are using a nikon camera i won't recommend this flash r1 or c1 uh, in in instead uh, sorry uh, i will show you later on it's actually kept under my uh, laptop only the box so basically i am using again the mike 1 and mike flash only twin flash i will definitely show you and it's it's cost approximately around 25000 but if you are getting a canon twin flash or the nikon twin flash it it's going to cost you more than 50000 i guess the cost is double speed lights speed lights i have mentioned it but it's hardly used in dentistry just for the portrait photography you can use it else it's not used in dentistry you have you must have or you all must have seen it in the wedding camera ke upar photographers isko laga ke ghumte hai like uh, i will show you i have this this is i use this this is a sb800 flash i use this i use it sometime for portrait photography a single light photography with soft boxes coming to the studio lights these are the studio lights uh, again it's used for the portrait photography and to enhance our work we can use it in the intraoral photography also uh, the best light to get is allen allen chrome that is frx 400 uh, you can get it or allen chrome 200 frx you can get it and if you want to go for a cheaper one then you can go for a godox lights godox 200 or 400 both work equally good there is you know uh no second thought about it you can go for anyone both are good <clears throat> i wanted to explain all these thing but i know the the scope of this lecture is uh, the time the time won't allow me to explain all these things but definitely we will discuss it uh, in the later question and answer session now photo intra oral photography without equipment is nothing so you have to get many times i have seen on facebook or uh, many other you know uh, uh, forums like people are posting cases like of the ortho cases or any other cases and they they are retracting the lip with a colored cheat re cheat retractor sorry but if you want to post your case anywhere like you have to get it published anywhere like in any journal international journal or any quality indian journal then definitely you should have these retractors that should be transparent you should not use the color like the red or the blue one because it becomes very you know distracting to the to the eyes now this retractor is called a, is it's a complete retractor for both the left and the right cheek and in with help of this retractor you can take you know the full arch shots uh, the in the maximum intercuspations or the centric relation shots <clears throat> or the buccal uh, side shots and these are the uh, sectional or the c shape cheek retractors if you have to get the molar relation then you can get you can just place a retractor over here and you can pull them pull the cheek apart and you can just you know come in this position with your flash and take a picture these are the contrast and these are the um this is a mirror and if you want to invest in a mirror um you can you can get mirror of any company but make sure your mirror is uh <clears throat> your mirror is front surface it's it should not be like a normal mirror it should be front surface if you will use a normal any mirror then you will get a ghost image like you you must have noticed when you are doing a endo with a normal hen and craft mirror and you see into the access cavity you have a double reflection in your eyes so that is a uh, normal mirror but for dental photography you have to use a front surface mirror like in dentistry we use zerk mirror for uh, endodontic uh, treatments and then comes the stainless steel mirrors and one disadvantage of this normal mirror of the front surface mirror also that it's not autoclavable <clears throat> but the these the stainless steel mirrors these are by the hen and craft 
these stainless steel mirrors are basically uh, made up of steel stainless steel and they, they have a very good reflective property and uh, they can be autoclaved very easily but definitely you have to take care of them you have to clean it with a uh, 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 normal like uh, muslin cloth uh, and then uh, you wash it with the soap clean it with the muslin cloth pack it properly in the autoclavable pouch and then you have to autoclave them then coming to these kind of retractors, these retractors, this is basically the occlusal retractors. So you can, uh, uh, you can get uh, not the occlusal retractor, but uh, definitely you can place it in the oral cavity and you can take some great aesthetic shots. And with the help of this kind of retractor, you can take, you know, the good contrasty lingual shots. I will be showing you all these. Now coming to the exposure triangle, exposure, just a photography ki jaan kaha jati, that is the exposure triangle. If anybody, you know, um, understand this thing, the exposure triangle, he can do photography very easily. So basically exposure triangle consists of three things. That is the aperture, shutter speed and ISO. What is the aperture? Aperture is nothing, but it's a small hole in your lens. Okay. It's a small hole in your lens. Uh, just try to show you no it's not visible here. it's a small opening in your lens or the hole in your lens that allows light to enter the bigger the hole more light will enter smaller the hole less light will enter bigger the hole you cannot see you know the back side or the your, the main subject will be in focus and we, you will get more blurring and narrower the hole of the uh, lens you will get you know more sharper the image the back you the background will be in focused so when you will when the aperture will open at f1 f1.4 f2 it's designated by f number aperture is f number like f1 the hole in your lens is biggest as you progress here f22 the hole becomes very narrow and i will show you the difference what happens shutter speed now shutter speed is basically we need uh, uh, shutter speed is like it's it's here one one by two it's one second it's like half second it's one by four second one by eight second so lesser the shutter speed mean it's if the shutter speed is one second or two second four second eight second uh you will be having more blurring of image if you are shooting an image handheld. Definitely, there are some situations where you have to keep shutter speed up to one second or two second or four second, but that is always shot on a tripod for nature photography, for night photography in that cases. But in dentistry, generally, what shutter speed we keep is, is 1 is to 125 or 1 is to 200. So, um, we have to keep a uh, subtle uh, shutter speed and if we go for the higher shutter speeds like one is to one by thousand two thousand four thousand that is basically freezing something like someone is jumping in water and we have to capture that splash we have to increase our shutter speed like one by eight thousand one by ten thousand and then coming to the iso iso is nothing it's just the sensitivity iso is sensitivity of your sensor to the light lesser the iso more sharper will be image if you will keep an iso very high then what will happen you will get grains in your image so this is basically the exposure triangle now can you see here this is the aperture at f1.8 the hole is big f2.8 it's closing it's become narrowing f4 f5.6 is getting more narrow then uh, sorry Just a second. Yeah, at F at F eight. Um, just a second. Yeah, so basically, uh, like F one point eight, it's bigger. The F two point eight is narrowing. F four again narrow. F five point six narrow. As you will keep increasing your, you know, the F number, that aperture will become narrow and light will enter less, and you will get more sharper image. But definitely at the expense of loss of light. Now let's let's compare all these images. Okay. Yeah. 
Now this is a image uh, that I shot at aperture 3.3. Now you can appreciate here when we are going on the posterior aspect of this canine, all the teeth are, you know, in the blurring effect on this side also, this side also, this side also. Now I just increased it here to f5.6. Now you can appreciate here beneath canine, if you will compare these two images, the premolar is a little bit sharper over here. Coming to f11, beneath premolar, the premolars are sharper. This is again the next premolar sharp again, but this last molar you can see here it's not very sharp. It's again very blurred over here at f11. But coming to f29, you can see what happened here is from central to the last molar everything is sharp. So basically, lesser the f number 3.3, you will get more blurring. Higher the f number, definitely you are going to get more sharper image. Coming to the shutter speed. Now, there's few modes in your camera that are called as a aperture priority, but I'm not discussing about all those modes. I just, my main motto here is, this is just a landing of a bird called as a cormorant in a water body at the time of sunset. Now you can see, I was, I, I, it would, would not be, have been possible to capture all these droplets if my shutter speed was less. For example, if my shutter speed was 200 or 100, then definitely it was not possible to capture these droplets, the wings, the, it, the photo would not be very sharp because the speed of the bird is very high and I need to freeze that motion. To freeze that motion, I have to keep my shutter speed really very high. Another, you can again see the landing bird, the droplets falling off the uh, wings and the wings are, you know, all in focus. It's because of the shutter speed. Again, here you can see this is the flying shot. This is an eagle and we all know how fast an eagle, you know, eagle flies so it's again in focus it, it can only be focused if the shutter speed is high and here the shutter speed was 7200 now you can see here this is a scenic view uh, now I have kept the shutter speed over here as a 10 seconds. Now, what is the difference? Uh, now, what is the difference? In previous pictures, we were able to capture the droplets, but it's a water stream over here flowing, but I have reduced down my shutter speed. So it's now looking like, you know, some milk is flowing through the rocks. So it's, it's not, you know, uh, it's, it's looking, it looks like cloud. So this, this, uh, you can play with the help of your shutter to create pictures in dentistry. It's basically dental photography is very easy. You just need to keep your shutter speed at 125 or 200, nothing else. You don't have to go till 8,000 or hundred or uh, 8,000 shutter speed or 5,000. It's just 125 or 200. Now coming to the ISO, as I told you, here the setting were F29, shutter speed was eight seconds and ISO was 25,600. Definitely we are not going to keep these settings in our dental photography, but just to show what happens at a very high ISO is this. Can you see how many grains are here? So this is basically what happens when he increases your ISO to very high levels like 800 or 1000, 1500. So, this is what happened. You get a very grainy image and not a sharp image. Now, this is the basic camera setting for intraoral and extraoral photography. I would recommend you all to take a screenshot of this because RPA setting and start shooting and composing your shots. You will get perfect shot every time. You just need to compose. So for the portraits, we have to keep the setting of the aperture at F10 and F11 for close-ups. We have to keep 25 or 32 like for uh, tabletop photography. I will show you tabletop photography also or intraoral photography. You have to keep it at F25 or 32. For intraoral lab, again, F22 to 29. These are the ranges you can keep. And cross polarization, this is something very different. I, I won't discuss it over here. And uh, the next coming is ISO 100, shutter speed is 1 is 125, white balance 5200. And you always have to shoot in RAW. There are two kinds of files that are called as a RAW file and a JPEG file. 
JPEG is a processed file. एक JPEG file की total जो property होगी it will be approximately 2 MB बी और वन एम बी ऐसी बनती है बट रॉ फाइल दे आर बेसिकली फिफ्टीन एम बी सॉरी फिफ्टीन एम बी ट्वेंटी एम बी डिपेंडिंग अपॉन ए कैमरा मॉडल सो एंड रॉ इज अ रॉ इन्फॉर्मेशन इन विच यू कैन फोटोशॉप योर इमेज अकॉर्डिंगली बट जे पैक इज अ प्रोसेस्ड इमेज तो ऑलवेज शूट इन रॉ देर इज ऑप्शन इन योर कैमरा uh for the file format always choose the raw and white balance to 5200 why 5200 because that is the normal temperature that is a kelvin it is in kelvin that is a normal temperature that we get outside in the sun the sunlight to so basically you have to keep everything as a daylight so we have we generally keep our white balance to 5200 as you will reduce your white balance to 4000 like 3000 you will get more of a, you know bluish tinge of images or cool images we call that as a cool image but as you will increase the temperature above uh, 6000 or 7000 you will get more of the goldenish or the orangish effect and that we call as you know a little bit of warm image but actually we don't you know playing with the color temperature in the intro photography so we have to keep a temperature at 5200 or 5250 and it depends upon the camera also but generally 5200 5250 or 5300 ke range ke andar you get a good color that you have to see according to your camera we have to adjust uh i will discussing it later on the magnification ratio so now let me tell you something okay let let's discuss about the magnification ratio also so whenever you are shooting a picture you know you have to set क्राइट एरिया लाइक आप कोई एक जर्नल के अंदर अपना आर्टिकल पब्लिश करा रहे हैं सो यू कॉन्ट हैव यू नो दिस मच अमाउंट ऑफ इमेज द नेक्स्ट इमेज इज दिस नेक्स्ट इमेज इज दिस सो यू हैव टू कीप योर मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो स्टैंडर्डाइज फॉर ईच शॉर्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल बट वॉट इज अ मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो सो मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो इज बेसिकली वेन यू फोकस ऑन ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम योर लेंस ओके वेन यू फोकस a uh, subject for example there is a coin and you are focusing that coin through your lens once it is focused and that image that is formed on the sensor jo sensor pe image ban rahi hai aapke to the actual size of the subject uska actual size kya i will uh, tell you like this for example mere paas ye ek scale hai ab maine aapko ek sensor size bataya ab hum ek crop sensor ki baat karte hain crop sensor ka size kitna hota hai 22 by uh, 18 mm ka size hota hai now agar aapne ek 44 mm ka 44 mm ka aapne scale le liya for example theek hai usse 44 mm ki marking hai now when you will go at a magnification ratio of 1 is to 1 like here you can see in nikon it is written 1 ratio and uh, it's not written one over here but there is a, a digit written over here one so hoti hai wahan par so when you are uh, like moving your lens is to mera isme move karega lens like uh, i am going to um, i am going to one is to one like this is the magnification ratio right now one is to one to usme kya hoga i won't be able to cover all the 44 mm into my camera ओके फोर्टी फोर एम एम स्केल में कवर नहीं कर पाऊंगा आई विल बी एबल टू कवर ओनली ट्वेंटी टू मिलीमीटर ऑफ दैट स्केल तो बेसिकली आप जो कैप्चर कर पा रहे हैं अपने कैमरा से और जो एक्चुअल साइज है उस सब्जेक्ट का उसकी रेशो को ही हम एक मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो बोलते हैं तो डेंटिस्ट्री के अंदर हमें हर शॉर्ट जो होते हैं अभी जो भी मैं आपसे बात करूंगा फोटोग्राफी की इंट्रो ओरल इट विल बी ऑन अ क्रॉप सेंसर कैमरा आई होप यू ऑल रिमेंबर दैट क्रॉप सेंसर कैमरा का आई टोल्ड यू द साइज इज ट्वेंटी टू बाई एटीन सो हम उसी की बात करेंगे कि हम कितने मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो पे हम वो पिक्चर लेते हैं ताकि हर बार जब भी हम पेशेंट की पिक्चर लें तो हम उसी मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो पे लें ताकि जब भी हम कहीं पोस्ट करते हैं पब्लिश करते हैं वी कैन गेट यू नो अ स्टैंडर्डाइज साइज ऑफ इमेज you can uh, take the screenshot of this slide the uh, i won't be discussing it over here i will just showing you the pictures uh, of all these shots you can just take a quick screenshot this is the international protocol uh, whenever you want to get your case published or anything you you should have all these shots
have you taken this shot yeah this one is the another one these all are the intraoral protocol that i am telling you right now coming to the next these are the protocol for the extraoral picture you can just take a screenshot of this moving further yeah so this is basically a complete retracted view now we whenever we are shooting with a crop sensor camera you have to set your camera at a 1 is to 3 magnification ratio and that you can see in your camera on your lens body now what you have to do is you never shoot in a uh, you never shoot in a auto focus mode you always have to shoot in a manual mode and once you have you know set your a magnification ratio at 1 is to 3 you just go through your viewfinder and you just move forward and backward you don't you know ask the patient to come forward or go backward left right you have to keep your chair position constant and you move yourself and you just keep focusing 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 and as soon as it focus you take a shot so this is basically a completely retracted view that you have to take at the ratio of 1 is to 3 magnification ratio then the second picture is for the retracted frontal view it should be slight open and uh, then you have to take the shot the next one is for the anterior guidance or we call it as an incisal guidance every shot have its own you know use for the smile designing or full mouth rehab we have to check occlusion coming to this ah one thing I, I i specifically put this slide over here one thing always make sure the mistake we make you know uh whenever you take a shot now this is a right lateral view you have retracted a patient complete cheek and you're taking a shot and this is also at one is two three this is for showing more relation can you see there's a food lodgement at the molar area in the premolar and the molar area this we did a case of full mouth rehab and then after you know the case was done, the patient came and we started taking pictures but we were so tired we took picture and then later on we saw that there's a food lodgement this should not happen whenever you're presenting a case or uh, you're publishing a case it doesn't look aesthetic so this is basically right lateral view then coming to the again the left lateral view again there's a plaque accumulation you have to clean all these things because before taking a shot now the detractor which i was talking about uh, you can place a detractor <clears throat> inside the mouth and take a picture and this is the retracted front view of the upper arch at a magnification ratio of one is to two Coming to this is just a variation to make it more uh, 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 to look more aesthetic. Again, here there's a plaque accumulation. Definitely, you can show it as a pre-treatment, but if you're presenting or there's something, you need to scale all these things. You know, you have to scale and then take a picture. Then coming to the right uh, lateral view of the upper arch, that is the magnification ratio of one is to one point five. Then the left lateral view, then the occlusal view of the maxillary arch this is the most tough shot that you can get because uh, it's very very hard to place the mirror and focus all the arch in a single shot then definitely you have to take it as a magnification ratio of one is to three the mandibular shot at one is to three then the normal lip position slight open at one is to three then the relaxed lip position then there's a frontal view with full smile just to check where uh, the teeth fall. Uh, is it falling on the vermilion border of lip or they are coming out, they're proclined or they are reclined. These just these pictures are just for, you know, the pre-operative evaluation for any kind of case you are doing. Then the lateral view to check the lip and the teeth competence in the lateral view. Then the smiling view of the patient as the one is two, three magnification ratio. then the 90 degree so basically you are taking a front 45 degree and 90 degree front without smile uh, then smile then the uh, 45 degree without smile with smile and 90 degree without smile and with smile then uh, you can take the lateral shots to check the overbite and the overjet then this is the most, you know, the famous shot that DSD made it very famous. And that is the 12 o'clock position shot just to check where the teeth are falling. When, when you are done with the case, then definitely you have to check the pre and the post shot. Are they falling on the vermilion border of the lip or not? How, because that looks the most pleasing and aesthetic. 
coming to the extra oral front uh extra oral pictures then you have to take uh, again without smile the front and the lateral views or the 45 degree view then with these are without smile then with smile and the ratio here is one is to 15 whenever you are taking such pictures you have to go at the ratio one is to 15 only then you can take this picture because with the 100 mm macro lens and all these pictures are with 100 mm macro lens sorry 105 mm macro lens sigma lens i have i haven't used any canon lens or nikon lens over here coming to the next slide again the <clears throat> 90 degree without smile then with smile you have to take picture of the patient then this picture is very important for the digital smile designing if you are getting any digitally uh, so your patient smile design digitally you can send it to the lab or the you know to the places where the doctor designed the smile on the software and they can just send you the picture or the uh, uh, designed smile then these are some creative angles then you can go once the treatment is done you can get some glamour picture like this with the help of soft boxes Coming to the tabletop photography, tabletop, basically, uh, once you are having the prosthesis in your clinic, before looting them, you can just take an acrylic sheet, place your <clears throat> uh, prosthesis or the teeth over there, uh, uh, these crowns over there, and you can take such pictures with the help of uh, studio lights. And the settings are very simple, F29, shutter speed is 1 by 125, and the flash is off-camera flash, and that you... Uh, uh, the off-camera flash that you trigger via trigger and this is these this is called a trigger uh, once i will connect it over my camera over here and will shoot will click my shutter button the flash will fire coming I mean, you can take these kind of shot and to make your ppt impressive if you are presenting somewhere you can combine these two shots on a one slide so it looks more pleasing more aesthetic I'm just here showing you the pictures only and because every person have different way of presenting or presentation. So presentation is in your hands, how beautifully you can make them, but you should have good pictures for it. Again, this a normal with studio lights. This I have added nothing but just a smoke effect with the help of that agarbatti. Just usko jalaya and allowed the smoke to flow behind the model and just clicked it with the help of twin flash and it was an off camera flash. Again, this, you can get a white background. Then this with the soft box, you can just, you know, show these pictures to your patient to motivate them. First, you can click this picture and show this. And after extraction, you can show your patient that look how, you know, decayed your teeth was, and then show the ceramic crowns that, that, that are made to him. And then you can show the result. Like before this, this was the result you can see here on the top. You can show the patient the result like this. You can take a close-up shot. This is a premolar. This was replaced. Sorry, even I can't make it. Which one was replaced? Yeah, five. This one. You can have a close-up shot to show the, show the you know the interface between the restoration and the gums. It looks beautiful. Coming to the shade selection for composites. Uh, I would recommend just throw that beta shade guides from your clinic. They are of no use. You cannot match a shade, you know, with those beta shade guides or any other shade guide or make your shade guides yourself with the help of a three, uh, with the help of, you know, uh, the composites, just get their recipe and make the, you know, uh, the shells yourself and then uh, select the color. But with the help of shade guides, you cannot match the color exactly because a shade guide is, it can't give you uh, exact color. It, it cannot give you color inside the tooth, of inside the tooth, you know, dentine color. It cannot produce you the chroma. And even you can't get the value exact with it. I will tell you how, how it's possible with a DSLR foot picture. Now, this is a normal case uh, with the class four, Ellie's class four fracture. And you can see here, um, now there's a lot of, these texturizations are actually not visible with the naked eye. Once you are, you know, taking a macro image, only then you come to see there's so much of texturization. There's so much of fluoroses over here. There's so much of vertical lines over here. So 
what I did, I just made the composite buttons over here. So I placed on the cervical end, what we place is uh, the dentine shades. Dentine shade, why on the cervical end? Because on the cervical end, the enamel, jo hota hai, enamel is less. So we place the dentine shade over there and on the incisal edges, we try and place the enamel shade because enamel wahan pe zada hota hai. Now what we do, we just have to convert our image. This is the same image, no difference. We are just convert our image into a black and white image. And once we convert it into a black and white image, we get the value. Now you have to select value. We don't have to look for the dentine right now. We, we have to just, you know, ये जो दो ऊपर हैं बटन्स इसको अवॉइड करना है वी हैव टू जस्ट कम डाउन एंड वी हैव टू जस्ट लुक फॉर द मार्जिन ओवर हेयर कि किसके कॉन्फ्लुएंट एकदम मार्जिन मिल रहे हैं दांत के साथ दैट इज आर इनामल शेड आप ये चीज भूल जाएगी कि A2 है A3 है A1 है A4 है हमने अभी नॉर्मल चेक किया था शेड गाइड से तो उससे ऐसा आता बट फोटोग्राफी विल टेल यू एग्जैक्ट कलर अगर इसमें आपको लग रहा है ए थ्री है देखने में लेकिन अगर फोटोग्राफी से ए फोर आ रहा है देन गो फॉर ए फोर आप इसमें देख सकते हैं लाइक दिस शेड दिस शेड इसके मार्जिन जो है दे आर नॉट मार्जिंग विद द टीथ बट लुक एट दीज मार्जिन ओवर हेयर इट्स मैचिंग इट्स मर्जिंग सो वंस यू सिलेक्ट दैट आई डोंट हैव क्रोमा आई विल शो यू नेक्स्ट यू कैन सी द रिजल्ट with it the composite restoration and uh, these pictures are taken with the studio light ah definitely studio lights you know uh, improve your work it it shows more aesthetic work this is the result and again you show it to the patient patient get very motivated you know they refer patient to you more patients to you then coming to the next case like here again the alice class 4 fracture again buttons were made Uh, and uh, high saturation image was done to match uh, the image was highly uh, the saturation was increased here to match the dentine with the teeth and uh, the dentine shade with the teeth and then the composite restoration was done followed by a layering technique this is basically a style italiano technique in which you use first the dentine layer and then remove 0.5 mm layer from the top uh, with the help of a misuro instrument and then you uh, blend your uh, enamel layer over it and polish uh, finish and polish it coming over here you can see the major difference with the photography and more over it helps improve our own work you know you learn yourself hum galtiyan kahan kar rahe hain coming again this is a normal case just these all for the patient patient dekhta and they become thank you doctor you did a great job we are very happy like this at least class 4 fracture the patient by chance bought his the fractured segment we uh, polished the surface edged the surface gave the star bevel uh, star bevel over here and then uh, 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 luted with the heated composite polished and finished now coming to what uh, the, is the advantage of you know um, how do you communicate with the lab i will tell you here uh, yeah now you can see this image this is a high contrasting image what we have done here over here we just took a normal picture with our dslr camera and we increase the saturation we increase the contrast of the image as soon as we increase the contrast what we saw for example yahan maan lijiye agar hame is daant ko replace karna hota the central one hum isko kaise replace karte hum iske andar kaise texturization dete kaise batate lab ko now we have a reference image we can send it to the lab we can tell the lab person the poor thing the person is suffering from fluorosis there there are if you you see at the lateral tooth a little in size there are the striations for the white lines there are again the fine white lines with a very narrow gap then again on the cervical end there is you know Uh, the white lines present at uh, the incisal edge it is little bit halo densely halo it's not you know very much translucent it's a halo and uh, again there is white lines so if you will send this these kind of picture to your lab then uh, definitely the person is going you know the lab person can easily create the uh, prosthesis for you matching the lateral incisor or the color of the top coming here this is i will i just took this picture to show you the difference now you can see over here you can't you know make out much isme kya hai kuch nahi agli aap image dekhi i just usko maine high contrast kara is image ko now see the difference what do you can see the bluish tinge all over here now 
just think if we have to do a composite in this tooth, it's a class four fracture. Just think, how would we do? How would we match the shade? It would be a nightmare to mimic it. Definitely we can't mimic 100%, but at least if we can mimic 60, 70%, it would be a good justice to your restoration. So definitely now see here in the center, so much of dentine is over here, yellowish aspect, the enamel is very less. And come coming down here, there's a bluish tinge over here. Coming more incisely, we can see a white halo over here and some white patches. So definitely uh, what I do in my practice, whenever I am doing a composite, I take a picture, make a high contrast, then I place it in, uh, I open that image on the screen in front of me while doing the restoration so that I can just look at the teeth in the, like, it's, it's like a cheating. I, I, so that I can look at the screen and I can see at the tooth the colors and then definitely I try to layer it accordingly and place my shades, my tints according to it. Coming to the more close up of the same picture. Now coming to the portrait photography. Uh, this is my niece. I took her photo at our vacation. Uh, yeah, I will just share your journey with me, a small journey. So how I learned my photography, she was a doctor at my clinic. So I started practicing, you know, photography with her. Jab, nah, nah, shocked her photography ka. So this was uh, the first image with my uh, DSLR camera with a pop-up flash. Then again, you can see how harsh, you know, shadows are. There is no proper back, uh, you know, there's no separation from the background. Eyes look tired like this. So coming then, then I started using light different way coming still better, still better. It's improving better. I'll just show you the final result from where we travel to where. Now this is the difference, same person, uh, different picture. So this is basically the knowledge of the lighting and nothing else. And this is just taken by a simple, a single, single light, normal SB 800 with a soft box. The light, which I told you earlier that uh, the, uh, I'll just show you this, this, this flash. So my main motto over is here not to show you these, these pictures are not used mostly in the dentistry, but just to show you that everything has a phase. You will learn slowly and steadily. Generally, people get, you know, this heart and picture nahi aari hai, wo cheez nahi ho rahi hai, amse. composition nahi battery hai, teri image aari hai, flash proper exposed nahi ho rahi. It's everything has a learning curve and everyone learns if they have interest in it. Coming to this picture now, generally, jo initial images hoti hai patient ki, uh, this, these are just the uh, 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 before and after image. I don't, you know, click a very, very good image of a person. Jab mein koi patient aata hai ki ek, usko ek image click karke de, that is a small hack or a small a cheat. So what I did, this is a normal, uh, you know, this is a young person, his central incisor is missing and we had to just replace it to the crown. We did our job, uh, we replaced it, we did a root canal and we placed a crown over here and we took a, uh, took a picture. Now you can see, and the patient become confident. Again, here coming pre-op, post-op, this. And always make sure whenever you're taking a portrait photography, never ask your patient, like after treatment, never ask your patient to sit straight. Ask them to sit, you know, like, uh, facing toward uh, facing toward wall on your left side and then ask them like this and then ask them to tilt their head this gives a very good pose to the patient and if it shall look more pleasing again this case so here the tooth was missing the central incisor was missing so uh, he he met an accident so we replaced it with an implant Again, see, you can see the changes. I just let, you know, before and after, and when I show after the treatment to the patient, I'm just ask them to pose for me. I just want to see them smile. So I just ask them, do whatever you want to do and patient become happy. Now, if you want to see, just have a look at the pre-operative image. How photography changes the patient, you know, mindset also. How happy they become. She looks tired in the first image here, you can see. Not happy, not confident about her smile. 
when she saw the picture she gave us a great pose and all these cases are done no not done by me these cases are done by dr ramesh gupta my father again look at look at this image this young this lady how old she looks with these kind of teeth and as soon as we replaced it with the help of bridge and the six veneers the look changes and definitely attitude also of the patient look at this and i never tell my patient to do like this or that they 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 just after looking at their post operative image just one portrait image they become so happy they just start you know uh, start doing modeling by themselves so it's my dad and me this is my office where i practice in shalimarbagh and uh, this is my family my brother in law sister mother and my small niece uh, we are saying we all are saying thank you to you for patient listening i know there are many things that i should have discussed because um, the time given to me by uh, dr priyanka was a little bit less she told me that you have to be a little bit quick uh, we have only one hour then we will be having question and answer session but i think uh, if there are some doubts anything we can discuss it right now because now we have plenty of time and as much time she would permit we will take your questions and we'll discuss thank you definitely sir thank you so much for a very informative lecture uh, i hope uh, everyone learned something new and uh, sir uh, we have some questions also yeah sure uh, Oh, Dr. Udit Gupta, I would first like to thank you for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. And uh, you have really, uh, I think you have covered everything in photography and you, have, you were able to bring smiles and confidence to my, many of your patients, really happy about that. But uh, we are all not well versed with cameras and like documentation. And like, I would like to know, like, which camera would you recommend for beginners? Lens uh, and flash, which type for beginners? Uh, sir, any entry level camera. you can get like if you are going for nikon you can go for nikon d5300 it's a good right. camera uh, it's a crop sensor camera it will cost you around 25000 rupees only and then right. for canon you can use 1500d now few things you have to keep in mind everybody have to keep in mind whenever they are going to purchase a camera to a market you have to see two things in it okay first is you should have a flash what we call as a pop up flash or this flash right we should have it it's not of a major use initially but later on if you try to you know once you learn more photography we can handle other flashes there are flashes which we use which we can use you know um uh, off camera we don't have to attach those flashes on our camera but when we will push our trigger down So when you push a shutter down, then what will happen? Those flashes will fire with the help of this this flash. This flash is called as in that case a master flash, and those are called as a slave flash. So you have to make sure that it should be there. Another thing is, you should be having a hot shoe. This is called as a hot shoe, so that here you can flash any of your, so that you can attach here your flashes. अगर ये आपके कैमरा में नहीं होगा ये पार्ट तो आप फ्लैश अटैच नहीं कर पाएंगे आप डेंटल फोटोग्राफी नहीं कर पाएंगे दिस इज द थिंग लेंस के अंदर यू कैन गेट अ मीके सॉरी लेंस के अंदर यू कैन गेट अ कैनन लेंस इफ यू आर यूजिंग अ कैनन बॉडी और फॉर निकॉन आई विल रिकमेंड यू टू यूज अगमा लेंस सिग्मा सिग्मा इज अ ग्रेट लेंस What, what about the ring flash would you recommend a ring flash because in some of the photos I, i was just watching like flash is like a bit more in some ring flash will, will that re reduce the flash so 90% of my pictures were with the ring flash only okay okay and uh, ring flash is the work horse in your dental clinic or any okay. other if you are doing i have i have shot surgical cases also 
like right. uh, uh, in general anesthesia during my post graduation for the oral surgery departments like oncology department was also there so they used to call me to you know have some shots so the workhorse was this oh, drink right. flush Right, this right. is the main thing answer i don't you know uh, recommend to spend uh, more 50 50000 on these kind of flashes like okay. canon flash or any other flash canon flash is very expensive you can get this uh, uh, a mike flash you can get it's a very good flash all you can see all my shots were with the this flash only 90 okay. percent. Okay. person and who is a brand ambassador who is a brand ambassador or specific brand will recommend Right. I'm not a brand ambassador of any brand, so I will right. recommend. Just that if job may be come, I say practically be come, and you can publish your good articles. Yeah, yeah. And the model number, I will. Uh, I have to just see. Yeah, it, the model number is MK fourteen EXT. Okay. But EXT. Okay. MK fourteen EXT. But make okay. sure whenever you are going to purchase this flash. it comes it's a universal flash it comes for nikon also for canon also you right, have right. to tell the dealer or if you are purchasing it online you have to type for canon or nikon kai nikon ka hai camera hai aur canon ki flash aa jaye wo fit nahi hogi sir right right and which, which type of uh, printer uh, should be buy for dental for photography any idea so which kind of so printer 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 from that sir no for taking the photos or anything like if you sir printer to hame requirement nahi hoti ki we just use the our uh, laptops only mac wagera ho gaya sir we don't right. uh, if we have to get the photo print sir definitely i i recommend if i i'm gifting you know uh, a portrait to my patient then i go to a very good high uh, studio and there i ask them to print my picture so they have uh, i will let you know the printer what they use i will let you know the printer no, i just wanted to you know supposing you were using one i just want no, to no, know no i'm not know. using any printer i just use my mac and the camera nothing right, else right. and right. one more thing i i, I didn't told you um, if uh, you are getting the flash you know that for iske andar agar hum yearly flashes use karte hain then definitely iski jo flash ka jo ye aage ka diameter hota hai this diameter it won't fit directly to your camera okay because we have to fit this so we what we have to do is this diameter is more we have to go uh, this is we have to go someone uh, something called as a this this ring this is a 58 mm ring you can fix your flash over it and uh, huh. so you can uh, fit it over here this ring there are two kind of ring step up ring and step down ring just to increase or decrease the diameter whenever you purchasing uh, um, uh, this uh, ring flash just fix it at the shop only and check for the diameter sir that is the best thing like my my the body it's the the circumference is 58 mm so i have to uh, fix that ring flash so it's required right. thank you so much dr udit uh, gupta it was a very wonderful and a fruitful session for everybody i like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your knowledge you shared with us thank you so much uh, dr udit yeah uh, i i have a little query uh, yes. first of all uh, i would just like to thank you for the amazing presentation and it was really very interesting um the other thing i just i just wanted to ask you one thing that uh, you right now what you spoke was about still photography sometimes yes. in in yeah still photography sometimes in in clinics while doing a procedure suppose we need to film the procedure um, so so then do you recommend the same dslr or is there something else that you would recommend to videograph the procedure same dslr ma'am same dslr same only okay same dslr okay there is no need to purchase anything you know different dslr have both features like mm-hmm. uh, the photography feature also and the recording feature also uh, mm-hmm. there is just a red button over here you have just press it and the recording will start but you have to focus uh, excuse yeah. me dr udit uh, any uh, uh, settings uh, changes uh, changes in the settings while taking videography just as ma'am said mm-hmm. 
I think some questions are there on the chat box. Uh, yes. So good evening, Dr. Deval. This side, one small question. Uh, recommendations for editing software that uh, you would recommend for a dentist to use so Photoshop. that we can correct any anomaly if, at all if there is there. Photoshop, any day. Photoshop CC. Right, right sir. Thank you. And and uh, one more thing I would like to tell you over there in the Photoshop CC, it's not very tough. You have to go just to the filters, just open the uh, Photoshop, go to the filters and in filters, go to the camera raw setting, you know, camera raw setting. And you will have all the options over there. And uh, in dentistry, we just don't need to, you know, uh, change many things. We don't have to edit many, many things. Uh, you can, what you have to just change is the exposure thing. A uh, little bit of highlights. Uh, if the teeth are very bright, just reduce the highlights. If the image is dark, just reduce, ex increase the exposure. No need to change. Or if you think your picture is too much yellow, just check for the temperature. It should be 5200 approximately. Nothing else is needed. Just for the cropping factor, you have to follow an aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is something different. I will uh, tell you what is that. Right, sir. Thank you. So one one small question or rather a query more uh, is that can we replace the DSLR with a Pro Max uh, sort of a camera like uh, Apple is coming up with a very good camera setup. So uh, is it possible to replace the DSLR with a Pro or a Pro Max lineup? Sorry, no, I have a Pro. Oh, sorry, I have an iPhone 13, but I don't use it for dental photography. Right, sir. Thank you. Reason, I uh, would tell you. Uh, reason, the reason is, first of all, uh, with an iPhone or any kind of phone, you cannot get that depth of field that I showed in my presentation. You can't focus till molar. First of all, that thing. In because the aperture value is very limited till 5.6. You can't go to F29 with your mobile photography. Second thing, a flash usme use karoge external source ki aage ke daat chamkenge, aage ke daato mein light aayegi, piche ke daat jo honge piche ki side jogi black nazar aayegi, buckle corridor black nazar aayega. Third cheese distortion. Aap ki image kabhi bhi aap lenge usme distortion nazar aayegi. Fourth thing is that you cannot have a magnification ratio in your mobile camera. You can't standardization maintain standardization. This is the reason mobile photography is not. If you want to keep your record, you want to keep your record, you want to show your patient that you have a scaling requirement, take this picture, then it's okay. But if you want to publish or post, definitely you should have a professional camera. Right, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Sir, uh, my name is Dr. Sachin. I'm a first year PG student in uh, periodontics. I've joined this year only. Sir, we have been instructed to take uh, uh, photographs pre-op and post-op now. But sir, most of us are uh, generally uh, uh, seeing our seniors, they are just practicing by mobile only. And sir, by taking from mobile, what I have uh, experienced till now after joining my post-graduation, that the same thing which you told just now, that the posterior uh, region is uh, mostly coming black. So, but uh, sir, what I wanted to ask that, uh, uh, like, uh, sir, purchasing a DSLR also at a minimum cost, as you told, is it would be around twenty five thousand. So, uh, can we uh, shift to uh, any uh, cheaper uh, option like uh, the normal uh, uh, digital cameras which we get in market for uh, within fifteen thousand or ten thousand? Will they uh, work? for the efficacy of the photographs and accuracy or uh, we have to go for the dslr see it's not about the body only understand one thing it's not about the body only it's about the lens, lens. it's about the lens 
यू आर यूजिंग हंड्रेड एम एम मैक्रो लेंस उसका पर्पज है इट्स मैंने आपको बताया इट्स गिविंग यू मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो जी सर वन इज टू थ्री है ना वन इज टू टू वन इज टू वन पॉइंट फाइव एंड देर इज अ प्रोटोकॉल इन विच यू हैव टू शूट पिक्चर्स एट स्पेसिफिक मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो आप कोई भी कैमरा ले लीजिए चाहे मोबाइल ले लीजिए चाहे पॉइंट एंड शूट ले लीजिए एनी थिंग यू वॉन्ट गेट अ मैग्निफिकेशन रेशो You won't get that kind of image. That won't make a you know different impact on your examiner. That will come, but definitely, you are in first year. That is the perfect time to learn. That is perfect time. You know, up you are a hostler or day, uh, day scholar. Just you know, if you are in Delhi or anywhere, just join any any course. These day courses, you can just join for two day course. You can come to me. Uh, you can do anything. You know. uh practice it and then one once you know in the final year you have to make your album yes sir when you will you know print those pictures in your album and show it to your the examiner external it will make a different impact it will you know make you stand out it will make you look different that the student have done something different go sir, for it okay sir thank you go for it so as i'm staying in kanpur sir i would uh, request uh, the team who has conducted the webinar if uh, any of the companies from delhi or they can contact me because i was interested in purchasing that retractors specifically which you mentioned uh, indicated at different sites in, in traorally plus i will just talk to the team also if anyone can provide me a camera in a reasonable price with the lens you suggested sure. if you guys are sure. please forward them uh, i'll just share my whatsapp number and i'll join the group too sure thank you sir nice sure. presentation sir thank you is a question in chat box i guess or all question covered let me check um yeah cost cost of what your comments on intraoral cameras available in the market intraoral are good uh, for the patient ed education just to show them what's in their mouth and for the procedure not for the documentation for the cost of maintenance of a dslr hardly anything you just need to uh, clean it and keep it in a uh, Good store, not in a moist area. Get some silica bags and put it in your camera bag so that there is no moist. Def uh, and it depends upon the place also in Delhi. Delhi में इतना फर्क नहीं पड़ता because climate में इतना moisture नहीं है. But definitely, if you are in Mumbai, then there is that the climate is very humid. You have to keep some silica bags because वहाँ fungus लगने का lens में बहुत ज़्यादा chances होता है. Uh, first question was cost of ring flash. Uh, someone asked. uh cost the of sigma ring, ring flash na no? sigma, sigma yeah, ring flash make with this much only approximately what is srgb yeah they, these are basically the color format so there are two kind of color formats that are the srgb and uh, the second one is the adobe rgb generally we shoot in the srgb and because this color jo ye hota hai most of the computers jo hote hain hamare uske andar jo programming hoti hai is done uh, the color scheme ki jo programming hoti hai is done on this basis only sir can you go to previous slide snapshot is being shared in a uh, how to achieve a sharp focus how to achieve a sharp focus okay first of all whenever whenever you are shooting intraoral pictures always make sure you are shooting uh, manually the second point is uh, always keep a single point focus not the multiple points just a single point focus keep it in the center of your frame and whenever you are focusing don't focus much on the contrasting area jaise ki upar ki chair ki light pad rahi hai daant pe uski reflection aa rahi hai us pe focus na kare jahan pe central incisor or lower incisors jahan milte hai jis point pe the jahan pe occlusion mein aate hain just focus at that meeting point and then uh, just move yourself back and forth back and forth at the magnification ratio that you have set and as soon as you see the first dot you know uh, focus shoot it nikon ke andar ek feature nahi hai jo canon mein bahut acha hai 
मैनुअल फोकसिंग के अंदर आप जैसे ही अपने कैमरे को लेके आगे पीछे मूव करते हैं यू हियर टिक टिक साउंड दैट इज इन द कैनन ओनली सो दैट इज बेसिकली यू आर फोकस्ड आप तब उसको शूट कर सकते हैं गेट अ वेरी शार्प इमेज जस्ट इट्स इट्स जस्ट द प्रैक्टिस एंड यू हैव टू यू नो क्रिएट अ फ्रेम यू शुड हैव द पिक्चर इन योर माइंड बिफोर शूटिंग इट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ पिक्चर आई वांट आई नीड अ रिट्रैक्टर डॉक्टर कपिल what setting should be used during shade selection for composite the same f29 shutter speed 1 by 25 yeah 1 by 200 iso 100 flash manual you can keep it accordingly like if you are at the magnification ratio of 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 2 then you have to adjust your flash accordingly or you can keep your flash at ttl also studio light or ring flash which one would you suggest sir definitely uh, for day to day purpose ring flash studio lights only glamour photography or aesthetic photography not not much required not much required invest in ring flash first learn it first only then invest in studio lights when to and not to use flash you have to use flash always in dental photography dental photography is equal to flash no flash no dental photography will certificate this the coordinator will tell you how to prevent the reflection of the flash on the tooth surface or you can't prevent the reflection of the flash on the tooth surface you can just diffuse it with the help of diffusers do you have any dictated course sir? yeah i do take Mike flash link for buying. You can purchase it from AliExpress. Photographs fit X-ray, please. Photographs for X-ray. Photographs for X-ray. <coughs> photographs for X-ray. These days you take digital photographs, else it's. I don't know what to say about it. Photograph for X-ray. The X-ray are digital today, but if you need, uh, if you seriously need to take a X-ray image, then you can place that you know small film or OPG film in the X-ray viewer. You can just then uh, use a camera, increase the ISO, and only that is the way you can capture it because the film is black and there is no light source, and more of the light is coming from back side. so please show you my id which one is better nikon or canon i would suggest canon any day what is ettl so we are left with the two questions only what is the ettl ttl okay the full form of it is through the lens so what happen is uh, in this case there is a it is a feature in the flash so uh, what what you do you put your flash on the ettl mode and once you know once you click you don't set your the flash power in it when you only set your camera settings like the aperture shutter speed or the iso once you take a shot with your camera what your flash will do there is a pre release of a flash that is not visible to your eyes that flash will go and hit the subject and as soon as that flash will hit the subject it will come back to your uh, flash uh, the body body of the flash and it will tell it ki wahan pe hame itna exposure chahiye wahan pe itni light padni chahiye and jaise wo information deta hai तो हमारी फ्लैश फाइनल जो सेकंड फ्लैश होती है वो फायर हो जाती है एंड वी गेट द इमेज और ये बहुत फ्रैक्शंस ऑफ मिली सेकेंड्स के अंदर होता है तो हमें पता भी नहीं चलता है इसके अंदर तो बेसिकली एक फ्लैश पहले जा रही है इंफॉर्मेशन लेके आ रही है और फिर फाइनल फ्लैश फायर हो रही है तो बेसिकली दिस इज यू कैन से ऑटोमेटिक काइंड ऑफ फ्लैश और ऑटोमेटिक एक्सपोजर हाउ टू ट्रांसफर पिक्स फ्रॉम कैमरा टू मोबाइल how to transfer pics from camera to mobile you can definitely uh, take your camera attach it to your computer transfer the files and from computer uh, uh and from the computer you can send it uh, or transfer it back to your mobile or there is 
a Wi-Fi system in your camera. If you have a Wi-Fi in your camera, then definitely you can use the Wi-Fi and uh, uh, transfer the images from your camera to your mobile. And if you don't have a Wi-Fi, then there are the SD cards available in the market by the name of Flash Air. And the cost of the Flash Air uh, SD card is approximately 3100. That is inbuilt Wi-Fi. So what you do is you connect your mobile phones with your camera through Wi-Fi and download the application in your mobile by the name of Flash Air. So when you will shoot any picture from your camera, that will automatically come in your mobile. So these are the three ways. Can you talk English, please? Okay. okay. Any more question, please? Uh, so do we have Wi-Fi enabled or Bluetooth enabled DSLRs at starting price? If yes, which brand? Definitely today, all cameras, I, th I guess Nikon D5300, it's coming today with the Wi-Fi enabled uh, feature. But if it don't have, then definitely you can get the flash. It's very economical card. It's, it's my memory card only for the cost of 3100 rupees of 16 GB. You can get that. Any more questions? I guess we are done with the questions. I hope uh, every uh, one questions uh, has been sorted out. And uh, thank you, Dr. Udit, for taking such an informative uh, session. And uh, not, I just, I can just imagine not you are just patient, even I am motivated. <laughs> <laughs> to see your pics, beautiful pics, how beautifully uh, you have done and how beautiful the work you have uh, shown. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Udit Gupta and uh, Dr. Priyanka and all the entire team of Max Dental Skills. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, I must say, Dr. Udit Gupta, sir, wonderfully explained, sir. And uh, hopefully in future, we would like to invite you again for our next session. And sure. uh, I guess uh, our all participant has learned something new and very informative. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much. And good luck. Thank you. And thanks to our like uh, chief guest, uh, Dr. Upasna, ma'am, Dr. Nitin, sir, and our all MAX team, especially Dr. Arpita Singh, Dr. Rajkumar Singh, sir, today, uh, he is not here due to his father's like uh, passed away yesterday. Dr. Surya, Dr. Deval Arora, thanks to uh, Dr. Nikhil uh, sir from IDA Secretary Delhi and uh, Dr. Kapilgar sir who suggested me Dr. Udit Gupta sir's name as a, our mentor of today's session. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Pinkan.